Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. healthcare professionals deserve greater recognition for putting themselves on the front line during the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, of course. It goes without without saying, really. I think there's one thing to give recognition in terms of claps, but these people need to be paid. Like, they've put themselves in a position where they were our frontline workers, they were there supporting um, not just our parents, but they were supporting um, our industries. They were there at a time where some members of government weren't necessarily there so they should absolutely get recognition but they need to be paid and they need to be paid a fair wage that not just reflects today but it should be uh, backfilling any missed payments that they've had over the past couple of years. I absolutely do I think it's more than recognition I think they deserve the best possible conditions good salary and not just for Covid for all their ongoing work. Absolutely. I think it's always important to take care of those people who take care of us. I have a lot of family members who are in the healthcare industry. Some are nurses, other healthcare professionals, and they constantly talk about how much they love their job, but how demanding it is and how much work they put in behind the scenes, extra for their patients, especially during COVID. I think it was really difficult for them. Um, some at some points we didn't get to see them for a very long time but they were constantly taking care of other people so I just think it's really important for us to you know give them the like the attention that they need. Yeah I definitely do um, I think we owe them a lot and they worked uh, really long hours for not very much pay um, so it's definitely an essential job. Without health care workers you can't really have any other um, profession we all need them and rely on them to stay healthy and happy and do our jobs and enjoy our lives financially definitely yeah um i think they're pretty underpaid and overworked so in that in that sense i think they definitely deserve more recognition it's pretty essential to all of us if you don't have your health what do you have um it takes a lot of training a lot of hard work a lot of dedication you have to put up with a lot of nasty stuff from a lot of people it's, it's a really tough job i think we all benefit from it one of the best things about our country is the nhs my name is esther i'm a gp assistant and i've been doing this job for a year and a half now i really like this job because it really allows uh, gps to have more time for the patients because we take the burden off the GPs or other healthcare professionals and just allow them the extra time with patients to provide better care. I love understanding what patient needs and from there finding what best treatment is required for the patient. I'm really excited for the blessing of the healthcare professionals because it's a big privilege for me to have this blessing. It's going to allow God to use me in a better way and also allow God to instill this character, this patience this empathy towards patients and also this understanding to truly help them better. Good morning to all of you. We, we, are, we are starting our program, the Be Inspired program with you. I know that some of you, you are in your breakfast now preparing yourself to go out, to go to work, to go and do whatever you need to do. Some of you, you are brushing your teeth, doing something, preparing yourself, getting ready for, for, for this day. And you are with us. We are with you. You are not here with us in the studio, but we are connected by faith. And this program, every morning that we are connected, this program is to boost your faith for you to be able to go out and face the world with your faith and overcome whatever you need. Always connected with us and we are connected with you by faith. And today, I would like to call your attention in the very beginning of the program because this coming Sunday, we are going to have something special for the healthcare professionals, as you saw the, the interviews on the streets, and you saw a testimony, not testimony, but someone that was telling about their profession. And it's so important in our days, because I remember in the pandemic, 
where the health professionals, they were in, at the upfront and helping people, putting their lives in risk. And in the universal church, we never criticize the doctors, uh, dentists, uh, whatever works in this area. We never criticize them. Actually, when we see someone in the church that is in need of going to the hospital and having a checkup or doing something that is important for their body, we are going to advise this person to go to because we know how important it is. And this coming Sunday in all the UCKGs here in the UK, we are going to bless all the healthcare professionals. If you are one, maybe you are a nurse, you are watching the program now, and you are a doctor, you are a dentist, or you are someone that works in, in an area, or you, you are a professional in this area, we are going to bless you. If you know someone, maybe you are watching us now, you are not a nurse, you don't work in this area, but you know someone that works in this area. You can invite this person to come to the house of God on this coming Sunday and receive this blessing. And this blessing will give them wisdom, will bless their hands, because I have no doubt that everyone in this area needs the God's wisdom to do what they do. And actually, it was created by God. We believe that. Have you ever uh, spoken to God before a surgery and you said, my God, please use the doctor's hands? And God indeed used and the surgery went well and everything went well. Of course, we need to work together. Medicine and your faith, both must uh, work together. It's going to be a blessing. You may come to our Cathedral of Miracles here in Finsbury Park, either 10 a.m. in the morning or 7.30 a.m. in the morning, or you can go to your local UCKG, okay? We are going to go now for a testimony, a beautiful testimony. Pay close attention. Don't go away because after the testimony, you're going to be back talking about something that will bless your spiritual life. My faith gave me the confidence for me to think about my future. It was giving me that vision that there's so much more that I can achieve. Yes, we may make mistakes at the end of the day and things are not going to go according to plan. But as long as I have that faith of, okay, aiming for greater, then sooner or later it's going to happen. My life today is an absolute blessing. I'm a much happier person. I smile more. There's just that genuine peace inside that you do not try to find other things to fill it. My family is blessed. I have an amazing job, which every day is helping me to grow. And it's also like giving me the opportunity to get to work with other people as well. And also just a genuine joy to be in the church and to be able to help other people to overcome the things that I have. It's been three years since my life changed. I've seen a complete transformation, being the person that I am now, having the joy which it is that I have, and just being firm in what it is that I believe in. My faith helped me to forgive. It helped me to overcome the traumas which it is that was within me. I could never forgive people because it's at all justifying all of the things that they have done against me. But I'm able to forgive myself. I'm able to love myself because that was something that I could never do before. I do not need validation from other people to be happy with who I am within. From the age of eight, I was abused by a family member. This happened back home in Nigeria. So this led me to having trust issues with other people. When I spoke to my family about the abuse, the kind of expression I got is, I don't care. Because biologically, I was not their child. There was no love, there was no care. I was literally treated as if I was just an object that was there just to cook, to clean. If I had done something wrong or someone else had done something wrong, I would immediately start to get beaten until the point that I'm bleeding. And if they heard me crying, that would be another round of punishment. And because of that, it's like hatred even to what's my own biological family that I didn't even grow up with, but I hated them to the point that's like, how could you allow me to go through all of this and you to be there enjoying your life, not even knowing nothing that was going on. Because of the way I was treated, I developed a violent mind 
to the point of planning, okay, if I ever see you, the person who abused me, their family, I will kill you. I'll make you suffer the same way that you made me suffer because I couldn't find a way to justify what it is that you've done to me and for you to be living freely, happily. And with all of this, it even led to me being child trafficked to England from the age of 10. In the airport, um, a search was done and then they found out that every document which it is that I had was fake. The people that I came with, they had no relations to me. And because of that, I ended up having to be separated from the, the family that I came with. I was put immediately into a foster care home. There was no relationship with the parent. Then it's like, for me, it's like, then what is the difference of being in Nigeria and being here when all I wanted was just to be loved by someone, but that was never the case. Even being with another different family, I couldn't like have that relationship. Even though they were trying their best, they just do everything that they can. I just couldn't see myself being a part of their family. I had to go to many different schools, try to fit in. And because of my appearance, it made me stand out a lot of having no hair, being darker than everyone else. I became a victim of bullying and I left school with no GCC, no studies, that I ended up having depression. So I decided, okay, I'm going to jump out this window. No one is going to care. There'll be no difference made. But unfortunately, there was just so much fear inside of me, even though I was there grasping the window, it's like I couldn't let go. I decided to just get out of the house. And that was when I was approached by one of the assistants from the church. And they spoke to me about the kind of event they have. And when I went there, there's young people smiling, laughing. And that was something that I never experienced personally. Like for them to be joyful, to be talking to each other, having friendship groups, it really attracted and caught my attention. I was so happy when I came to the church. It's like kind of like forgetting everything that was happening outside. The Universal Church is a place that I found faith. It's a place that I found joy, a place that I can say that I found a family where I can trust people to, to help me without having judgment, without being worried. We have many people who have been through the same experiences and they'll help you to overcome because that is what it is that they did for me. Being a Universal, it just means like trusting. They don't judge you, oh, you're this or you're that. You can just be yourself openly and speak about everything which is that you're going through and you're able to receive the help which is that you need. Even though I've been in the church for six years, it took me a while to learn how to use my faith because there was that doubt and that grudge of, oh, I'm not worth it, I'm not lovable, I'm not deserving. But when I learned how to use my faith, that was when I started to see the change, the transformation, like being able to sleep well at night, being a joyful person. All of these little steps, I could already see that difference of me getting there and learning to be mature in my faith. Now being in the Universal Church, I'm able to share my story with other people so that they can understand that, yes, we all go through difficult moments. I'm able to share my story to help them to develop. I'm able to sit down with people and to talk to them, giving them a word of assurance, not judging. And I couldn't do this before, why? Because I lacked confidence. There was no transformation inside for me to be able to share and to give what it is that I have. Because of the power of my faith, today I'm able to forgive my family for everything which is that happened in the past. For the person who abused me in the past today, I, I forgave them and I'm able to, most importantly, forgive myself because this was something that I could have never done before. Today, I'm working with one of the highest companies with people who are celebrities, people who are influential to the world. But above all, the most important thing to me is the Holy Spirit. I said to myself, God, as long as I have your spirit, then I'm okay because with you, I'm able to overcome everything that I went through. I do not regret being a part of the Universal Church. Without the Universal Church, I wouldn't be here today. The Universal Church gave me hope. It gave me like ambitions, it gave me dreams, and it gave me a place which is I can say that I belong, and I'm able to speak to people freely. They're able to help me to overcome everything which is that I've gone through, and I will not exchange for anything else, nothing. Well, what a testimony is that? And this testimony has all to do with what we are going to tell you right now. 
You know that recently we have been speaking about sanctity, holiness in different areas of our lives. How can we sanctify ourselves to God? Because we can't treat the things of God any way or anyhow. We have to do it with holiness and sanctity. And if there is something in the UCKG, we are not perfect. And we are far from being perfect. But we try our best to not, let us say, there is a word, very powerful word that says, deconsecrate the things of God or treat the things of God any way or anyhow. And we, we want to preserve that until the end, even though the world is completely different. In the world, you don't see this sanctity anymore. You don't see this holiness anymore. But in the house of God, serving God, serving the God of the Bible, we want to keep that until our Lord Jesus comes back or until we depart from this world. Because, by the way, our salvation depends on it. You see that this lady, when she came to the church, she was going through a lot, a lot of things you could observe in her testimony. And one word, someone came to her and that word changed everything. Uh, let us say she received this positive word from that evangelist assistant or whoever evangelized her. And that word brought life to her, brought hope. And today she is in the way she is. Today she's happy. She's, she has a very, nice, uh, uh, a very nice profession. Today God gave her life. Today is completely different. And the word of God speaks about it, talks about it. Let us read together. In the word of God, in, Pro, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, it says, In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. One way we have taught you different ways how to sanctify yourself, how to walk in holiness, and one of the ways that we can do that is through our words, our lips, the words that come out of our mouth. For example, how many people, they entitle themselves, I am a Christian, I'm born again. But once in a while, when they have, you know, sometimes unconsciously, they say a swear word. When I say a swear word, I'm not sanctifying God's name. On the contrary, I'm putting it down. I'm destroying my spiritual life. How many people that they entitle themselves as Christians, but they are always negative. Only negative words will come out of their mouth. How come from one source, will come good and bad, or good and evil at the same time. It's impossible. Either the fountain, the fountain will spring out good, or it's going to spring out bad. There is no way for the same fountain to bring out good and bad, if it makes sense for you. And with our words, we can worship God. For example, when we come to the church on Sundays, on Wednesdays, we worship God with our mouth. How come I worship God one day and the following day with the same mouth, the same lips, I say words that I were not supposed to. Pastor, I think that is too much. No, that's not too much. This is holiness. And our God is the God of details. And he looks into details when we, we speak, when we talk, with the words that will come out from our mouth. Another thing very important, and today we are here with Pastor William from our branch in Cuba. And actually before, Pastor William was here with us and was looking after 
the love therapy. And how many, Pastor William, how many husbands and wives, they end up bringing their partner away from God because of the, the words that come out from their mouth. For example, sometimes the husband doesn't want to come to the church and the wife starts like offending the husband with words. In other words, the, the, the wife is not wise in order to treat the husband or, or vice versa. And this is very important. When we sanctify our words, we are able to save our partner, to save your partner, to save that person that is with you. Good morning, Pastor Richard, and uh, you are right. And you know, when you spoke about like uh, swearing words, when you said about those things like uh, the couple, when they say things that they shouldn't say to each other in the relationship, on top of that, you know, how many they destroy their relationship because of lies is one of those things as well. So they are not straight. They do not honor their spouse. They do not honor. And uh, I heard people saying, you know, uh, counseling people, but you know what? My wife had asked me about these things. Why did I come late home today? If I say the truth, that the truth, perhaps she or he will leave me. But how to overcome the lies, for example? How to sort it out? Do what is right. Do what is right. So if you do what is right, there will be no, no reason for you to lie to your wife, to your husband. So when the person, they understand the principles of God, when the person understands that they have to glorify his name and uh, uh, consecrate and bless the name of the Lord, their life is going to be completely different. As you were saying about treating each other properly. So when you see your spouse as an enemy, especially when he or she say or give a tip to you or say a thing that you did not, did not like. So if you see that person as a gift from God, your spouse as a gift from God, you're going to treat that person properly. And that's why, this is the reason why we recommend, Pastor Richard, for the people to come to the law therapy, especially today. Because when they come here, they are going to learn the intelligent love that will bring their relationship to another level. I totally agree with Pastor William. Today is Thursday. And in this service, you are going to learn the intelligent love. And you're going to learn how to treat your partner. How to bring your partner closer to God. How can you use the words in order to sanctify yourself? Not deconsecrate what you did. <laughs> because sometimes people, they, they try to do something, but they do it in the wrong way. And today, at 8 p.m. here in our Cathedral of Miracles, Bishop James and his wife will be here together in faith. And uh, the whole London the London area will come down to, uh, to the, the Cathedral of Miracles and outside London will watch via conference. It's going to be a blessing for sure. Let's go now for the highlights of the love therapy and we come back straight away. Prepare your cup, your glass with water and straight away we are going to pray for you and bless your day. What is the purpose of a dating app? The purpose of a dating app and... There are dating apps and dating apps. There is one dating app if you are single and you are converted. There is one dating app that I would advise you to be part of. If you are single and you are converted. There is one dating app that I would advise you to take part of. What is the name of that dating app? It's the one that the church created. Because you are going to meet people of the same faith. But what is the purpose of a dating app in the world? It's to connect people who don't know each other, right? So you can connect with people. You're here and there's someone else, you know, in Asia, America, Europe. And you can connect to that person. Of course, when you join a dating app that is not sanctioned, 
by, I mean, sanctioned in the sense of faith, you run the risk of getting involved with someone that you don't know. But this is the great thing of depending on God. Because you, you, in the world, people need an app to get to know someone that they don't know. But there is one person who knows every single person in this world. Who is that? Our God. Amen. You agree with me? God knows every person in the world. If I depend on him, I rely on him, then God, he can prepare the person that he chose for me. And of course, this is not just for the singles, but for example, there is a value in the world for uh, advisors, for marriage counselors and all of this. But in the end, the one who knows love, the author of love, is the one who fixes the problems. Often, marriage counselors have bigger problems in their own marriage than the people who go to sit in front of them. In the end, when we depend on God to fix our problem, to solve our issue, he can work in our lives. A lot of people put their faith, put their trust in an app, in a counselor, an advisor. A lot of people put their, their faith even in the pastor, the bishop. They say, Bishop, I believe if you advise me, my marriage problem will be fixed. It will not because it's not me who's going to fix your problem. In the end, you may even take the advice, but you have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord and Father, here together in the same faith, as I said before, we can't have them all here in the studio. There is no space for everybody here. But we are connected by faith every morning. And I ask you, O oh Lord, for you to visit this person now, strengthen their faith. And my God, from here, actually today I will not be here praying a lot, but I will prophesy, my God, that the blessing is now with this person. All they need to do is to receive that. Just receive that. Healing, transformation, life transformation, family transformation. Everything that you need. Receive the Spirit of God with you now. You now. And I believe that very soon you're going to be the next testimony to glorify God's name. My God, I bless this water. And I ask you that when we drink from this water, let this water to bless this person and bless their lips. And from now on, through our words, we are going to sanctify your name. We are going to glorify you in the name of our Lord Jesus. And all those who believe, say, Amen. Amen. You can drink the water right now. Now, the thought of the day. Well, we have reached the end of our program now, and we couldn't finish without the thoughts of the day. And this is very important. The thought of the day for today is, be careful with words. A word can either put someone up or bring them down. Look, before you speak to your parents, people around, measure your words. Because sometimes you act by impulse and you end up, you end up offending someone and bringing that person down. 
Let's be careful with the words. If I speak to someone, it's not to put that person down, but to bring them up. This is what Jesus would do in our place, okay? Today, your day is going to be a blessing. Don't be worried about anything. Just go out. Do whatever you need to do because God is with you. And tomorrow, we are going to be here together having the breakfast with you. God bless you all. See you then.